Hi guys, okay, so I'm making a quick uh, video here on lesson eight, support and resistance, common mistakes. Okay, chart control. You need to be able to scroll up and down and you need to be able to move the horizontal plane. So horizontal plane and vertical plane. Uh, you need a, I'm doing this with a scroll mouse. I'm also, I can hold down the control key and zoom in on uh, a specific spot. You need to be able to do this. If you don't know how to do this, I have a second video on chart control. So you need to be able to uh, obviously move the charts around. And because we're working with support and resistance, we're going to be using line chart. So I switch to line chart. Okay. So the next common mistake is people look at old data before they look at new data. And what does that mean? Okay, so I'm just going to uh, use a screenshot tool here so I can mark up the screen. So what do I mean by old data versus new data? So what I mean is we're looking at the bottom here. See how there's, there's dates all along here? Well, I like to split the screen in half. I want you to look at new data before old data, right? You want to look at this one first and this one second. So what I mean is since we have all these areas here from new data, we're not going to be really looking over here at this moment because we want to zoom in on our charts here, right? Here, say if, if, say if uh, we have no information here, then we can look at older chart data and we can find support and resistant lines. But what I want you to do is zoom in on the new data first. So let me just close this. I don't want to save it. So let's zoom in. So what I would do is I would adjust my charts. I would stretch the screen vertically and see how I'm moving the charts. And now we're going to examine the new data first. We're not looking over here. We're looking over here because we want to look at new data first. So that's what I mean. You want to look at the new data first because you really need to stretch the charts, get in here, and then you can really, you can now you can see, okay, I have a two, two touch rule right here. Uh, one second, right there. I can save it as monthly and then, whoops. And then I can click on it and hit lock. So now it won't move around, but see how, um, you know, there's one touch here and one touch here. So I want you guys to demonstrate this for us so we can we can see, okay, this student understands the two touch rule. We have one touch from the bottom and one touch from the top. That's what I want you to demonstrate and be able to show uh, the, stu the teachers that are reviewing your charts in the student group, right? So this, so, Step one is chart control. Step two is looking at new data before old data. So see that I now that I have a, a two touch point right here, I don't need to look. I don't need to look. Uh, let me highlight it. I don't need to look over here, right? I, I don't need to look further back here because I already have a valid two touch from new data versus old data that's over here. We don't care about old data if we can find a nice touch point in new data. So that's why I want you to zoom in. You need to have proper chart control so you can actually zoom in on the area that we care about, which is right here. This is the area we care about. I want you to zoom in and try to find uh, support and resistance in here. So let me try to quickly find another one right there so we can see there's a i'll just move this we have a touch on the bottom and we have a touch from the top right there and i want you guys to use these arrows to mark it so it makes the uh, teachers who are reviewing your charts in the private student group um, they can review it easily okay so step one was chart control step two is looking at new data before old data step three was the two touch rule so I want you to demonstrate you understand the two-touch rule because that is the core concept. 
if you don't understand the two touch rule, then, um, you know, you're not going to make any progress. So this is the two touch rule. Uh, and then the other thing is too many lines. I've in the training, I've, I've told you to go to the monthly chart and then add in monthly lines like I added here and then label them as monthly. Make sure you label them. So I'm going to save this as monthly and then I lock it. So now I have two monthly lines that have locked. I've, you know, I've used circles, elliptical and arrows to identify the two touch rule. And then the next mistake is number four, too many lines. People make too many lines. Like that's why I'm saying you don't need to look at old data. You want to look at the best lines or best support and resistance lines, the two touch rule from the new data. If we don't have any, so here we have up here, if I move this, we don't have any um, data, new data here. See, there's nothing here. So that's when we start looking at older data. You understand? Now we look at old data and say, okay, we have the two touch rule uh, right here. Let me quickly find one that I like right there. So you guys can also just do this highlight here with a, with elliptical or a circle, whatever you want to call it. Let me quickly move it. Having problems with this. And you can, and then the other touch is right there. And then you can use arrows. You can also use the control C. So I'm using control C and then control V. It's, it's a copy and paste for um, quick keyboard function. So you can learn that. So control C, control V to paste right there. So see how I looked at new data first, new data first. I want to find the best support and resistance lines here using the two touch rule. And then I looked at older data because there is no new data here, right? That's what I mean. So now that you know how to do the two touch rule and look at old data, new data, let's go back to our list and look at the common mistakes. Okay, too many lines. Okay, so we want to first find the best monthly lines and then we want to move to the weekly chart. And then if there's any big gaps, like see how there's a big gap here? I said just add weekly lines in uh, the big gap. So there's a big gap here. Maybe we add, maybe we look for weekly lines. We can add some weekly support and resistance using the two touch rule here and then label it. Uh, I'm not actually... That's not a proper support and resistance line, but I'm just showing you in the big gap, maybe put one weekly line and lock it. But I'm going to delete it because I didn't show you the proper way to find it. So common mistake with this is people are going to the, I don't know why, in the daily, they're going to the daily chart and then they're putting in more support and resistance lines uh, here. And then your chart, then you end up having so many support and resistance lines and it just looks... It just looks sloppy and it just looks your charts look packed so here if you're adding too many lines and then when we drop down to the lower charts you know you're gonna have too many too many lines showing everywhere so don't just do just add the monthly and weekly support and resistance lines don't add any daily because what we want to do is we want to uh, create these uh, trade zones when we when we add the monthly lines when we drop down to the lower time frame and we switch back to candlestick analysis then we want to have these trade zones so we would want to you know trade down to this level or or maybe trade so what I, what I'm trying to do is create these zones using support and resistance and if you have way too many lines, then you, do, you lose these zones. All you have is a bunch of lines, which let me copy and paste this, copy B. So if you just have way too many lines, this is what some of your charts are looking like. Some people are adding daily. We have a lot of good monthly levels. Stick with monthly, add some weeklies in the large gaps. We don't want so many lines like this because now instead of having a nice trade zone here we have just you know it's we don't have a zone 
our strategy is to trade um, zones, support and resistance zones, and the other tools I'm going to teach you. But really, right now, I just want you to um, don't make these common mistakes. Okay, so okay, so I talked about too many lines and post your monthly and weekly chart. Okay, so last mistake people are making is when you post your charts, we're still supposed to be in line chart when we're doing support and resistance. When you want the teachers and the student group to re to review your monthly chart, then see this, you have to be on your monthly chart. Then we can say, okay, touch here, touch here, monthly chart this support and resistance line for the monthly support and resistance is correct. Uh, let me just monthly lock it. So it says monthly. This is how I want you to have your monthly charts reviewed. And then if you want us to review your weekly charts, then you go to the weekly. See, I clicked on the weekly time frame. Now you're, we can look at your weekly support and resistance, but we can't review your weekly lines or your monthly lines unless you're on the proper chart so once you put your monthly support and resistance go over here some of you people aren't still using the camera icon use the camera icon go copy link to uh to image or chart image and then you can just paste it whether it's in a web browser or you can paste it paste it in your facebook um post so i'm trying to keep it short these are things I want you to work on. Uh, these are the common mistakes. Don't make them. I'm going to have this video as a reference for um, the teachers and the student group to link out to you if you're having troubles with the common mistakes. So this is the common mistakes with lesson number eight.